The story starts with a family on vacation. Brandon, his wife Claire, and their daughter Emma. They are enjoying their time together. However, things are about to change dramatically. While on a walk, Emma tells her parents she's going to the water to catch snails. Claire agrees but warns her not to go too far. Emma begins playing in the mud, but her monkey doll accidentally falls into the water. Emma tries to retrieve it but tragically drowns. This devastating event leaves Brandon and Claire heartbroken. At Emma's funeral, Claire resolves to try and forget Emma, accepting that her daughter won't return. Meanwhile, Brandon continues to struggle with the loss, keeping Emma's room just as it was. One day, he notices something odd on Emma's book, the title that he thought was spelled differently, which puzzles him. That night, when Brandon's brother-in-law Matt visits, Brandon brings up the book, seeking his opinion on the peculiar change he noticed. Matt agrees with Brandon, remembering that the name of the Berenstain Bears book used to have an E in it instead of A in the word Berenstain. He is just as surprised as Brandon to see that the name on the book has changed. This discovery makes Brandon even more curious, so he decides to look it up on Google. He finds out that many other people also remember the book's name the old way. Driven to learn more, Brandon continues his research and comes across a girl explaining this phenomenon accurately. She talks about the Mandela Effect, a situation where a large group of people remember something differently than how it actually occurred. For example, some people mistakenly remember Nelson Mandela dying in prison in the 1980s, although he actually passed away in 2013. This kind of memory discrepancy has been noted in various instances, hence it is named the Mandela Effect. The next morning, Brandon notices another peculiar thing that adds to his intrigue. He is shocked when he sees a family photo on the fridge and remembers that it was taken in a different location than what the photo shows. He tried to share his concerns with Claire, but she was preoccupied with cooking. Frustrated, Brandon went outside to talk to Matt about his thoughts. He expressed his belief in what he called the Mandela Effect, feeling that many things around him had changed in ways that didn't make sense to him. Matt, however, didn't take Brandon's concerns seriously. He suggested that Brandon might be experiencing false memories, influenced by things he had read online. But Brandon was adamant that his memories were real and began to wonder if he had somehow entered a parallel universe where things were subtly different. Brandon dug deeper into these theories. He discovered an article suggesting that the main cause of the Mandela effect might be an experiment conducted with the Large Hadron Collider in Russia in 2008. According to the article, this experiment led people to feel as if they had shifted into a parallel universe. Seeing Brandon so absorbed in these theories, Claire became worried. She thought his obsession was a way to cope with their daughter Emma's death. She urged him to let go of Emma's memory and move forward with his life. However, Brandon continued to seek validation for his experiences and asked Claire if the Monopoly game's mascot wore glasses on the cover. Claire confirmed she distinctly remembered the mascot wearing glasses. Brandon revealed to Claire that the Monopoly game cover did not feature the mascot with glasses, contrary to her memory. He further pointed out that the monkey doll they currently had lacked a tail, whereas in the beginning of their story, Emma's monkey doll clearly had a tail, which she used to hold onto it. Brandon used these inconsistencies to explain to Claire that they might be experiencing the Mandela effect suggesting they had unintentionally shifted into a parallel universe where Emma had died, whereas she might still be alive in their original universe. Upon hearing Emma's name again, Claire became upset. She accused Brandon of being unable to move on from Emma's death and becoming consumed with internet theories. Despite Claire's frustration, Brandon remained convinced of his beliefs and intensified his research. He discovered theories suggesting that the Mandela Effect might be caused by glitches in the space-time of various parallel universes, causing them to blend. These theories propose that many parallel universes exist, each slightly different from the others. For instance, in one universe, Nelson Mandela died in prison in the 1980s, while in another, he lived until 2013. Fueled by the possibility that Emma might still be alive in another universe, Brandon became even more determined. During his investigations, he encountered the name Dr. Roland, a theorist who thinks that our world might be a computer simulation. Driven by desperation, Brandon managed to find Dr. Roland's address and set out to meet him. Dr. Roland was initially too busy to meet with Brandon, but persistent efforts finally led to a meeting. During their conversation, Brandon shared his experiences and mentioned his research into what he believed to be a simulated world. 
Dr. Rowland confirmed Brandon's suspicions, explaining that according to his own research, their universe was indeed a computer simulation, though its ultimate purpose remained unknown. He described everything in the world, buildings, trees, plants, and other entities as components of a computer program. The changes Brandon observed and attributed to the Mandela effect could be glitches or bugs in this simulation. Encouraged by Dr. Rowland's explanations, Brandon wondered if it were possible to alter the simulation through script coding. Dr. Rowland clarified that such changes couldn't be made with just any computer, which led him to develop a new quantum computer with the collaboration of his colleagues over many years. Dr. Rowland then took Brandon to their university, where he showed him the quantum computer. He explained that this machine, built after years of hard work, had the potential to make significant alterations to the simulated world if they managed to code it correctly. After learning about the quantum computer and its capabilities, Brandon, who was a game developer, started working on coding. With his background, he understood coding well and dedicated days to research and writing the necessary code. After much hard work, he completed his coding and went to sleep peacefully. A major twist occurs when Brandon wakes up the next morning to find his daughter Emma alive in his house. Shocked and confused, he questions Claire about Emma's presence, considering she had died many months ago. Claire's response is even more baffling. She tells him that Emma never died. Seeking further confirmation, Brandon speaks with Matt and other people around him, and all insist that Emma never passed away. This leads Brandon to believe that perhaps, due to some glitch, he has returned to his real universe where Emma had never died. Overjoyed, he spends time with Emma, feeling like everything he lost had been restored. However, amidst the joy, Claire begins to act very strangely. She starts running around erratically and breaking utensils without any apparent reason. Then Brandon's was shocked when he discovers that Dr. Rowland, whom he had just met a few days ago, supposedly died months ago. This discrepancy convinces Brandon that the simulation theory is accurate, and that the computer program controlling their universe manipulated events, returning his daughter Emma to prevent him from, from changing the code. Exhausted and overwhelmed by these revelations, Brandon decides he must act. Despite concerns that running his code could potentially destroy and then possibly restore their entire universe, he believes it's necessary for his family's well-being. He takes the pen drive containing his code and sneaks into the university to access the quantum computer. Once Brandon runs his code on the quantum computer, immediate changes begin to ripple through his surroundings. As he rushes home, he notices that all cars have vanished from the parking lot. He catches a bus where he observes that everyone, including the environment around him, buildings and trees, begins to glitch. Reaching his home, he finds that Claire is also glitching. The alterations caused by his code intensify, leading to a rapid unraveling of the simulated environment. Eventually, everything around him starts shutting down, and darkness begins to envelop everything. The entire world around him disappear in an instant. However, after a moment of complete obliteration, code lines begin to appear on the screen, signaling the reconstruction of the universe. Everything is restored. Planets, living beings, and all of human history. The universe reboots to a specific moment. Brandon, Claire, and their daughter Emma are back on the beach, enjoying a peaceful day. This time, when Emma asks to go play with the snail, Claire instructs her to leave her monkey toy behind. Notably, the toy no longer has a tail, aligning with the changes Brandon noticed before. Emma plays safely and comfortably, and this time, she does not meet a tragic fate. The story concludes here. If you enjoyed this video and appreciate the effort by subscribing to the channel, thank you for watching.